Hi, and welcome to the What's in the Bag Golf Show. This is not your standard review show, because to be honest, I think get a little bit serious, don't they, Josh? Absolutely. I'm fed up with the same old reviews, all right? We're gonna review the same stuff, we're gonna look at clubs, we're gonna look at fight scopes, we're gonna look at training aids, but we're gonna do things a little bit differently. We're also gonna save you money. Who doesn't wanna save money, right? We're northern. Exactly, very, very tight. And the good. last thing we're gonna do, even more northern, we're gonna trade Emma's club up to uh, a Scotty Cameron. Emma's club. This boy doesn't know a relic when he sees it. So let's get into what we're looking at in today's show. So what can you expect in today's show? Today, we're gonna compare a 20 grand fight scope to a free app on your phone and see which is better and if it's worth it. Can't be worth it, right? Well, it's free, so that's probably worth it, but anyway, that can't be worth it. Anyway, and enough of that. And as you can see, guys, we're not on a golf course, we're in a back garden, because unfortunately we're in lockdown, so, thanks to Alex, we've got a nice net here. And guys, if you want this net, use Lockdown 2 for 10% off at Alex Elliott Golf. You can get your golf net. Please buy them, because I've been trying to sell them for about <laughs> six months, just do my idea. We're also gonna look at, in today's show, how you can save money with getting the right grips. And then finally, we're gonna introduce you to the trade-up. So with each of our reviews, we've got a three strikes and your out process. Yeah, so with the first one, we're gonna look at the Shop Vision launch monitor app on your iPhone, okay? It is a free app. But well, there is a paid version. Too free. Well, <laughs> it's 6 a month for the paid version, but we're going to show you why we don't think you should do that. The first thing is, it's not actually free, because you need a tripod. So you've got to pay for a tripod. And you've got to set it up as well. And you've got to set it up. Yeah, so, so we're going to go through that process now. Okay, so for me, is that, is that one strike? That's one strike. It's got to be one strike. It's not a paid app. It one strike. App. But one it's not, because you've got to have that. Yeah, exactly. Oh no, you can have a towel though. Oh, you could have a towel. Uh, okay, yeah. So, okay, so let's set it up, Josh. Pop it in there. See if I can get this right. In the free app. Select the club. So we're going to go six iron because six iron. The, the nets will ultimately be the best nets that you'll ever buy, but we don't trust Josh with actually hitting this. You know. Please, mate. Sorry, mate. <laughs> okay, so what are we reviewing it against? We're reviewing it against the Flight Scope XI Tour. So we're going to talk you through how to set up the app and how to get it ready to go. Okay. So on the instructions, they say you need a driver. Okay, don't worry, I'm not gonna hit it. Just gonna say one thing before you do that, mate. Is this questionable? What the blues? What do we think about that, guys? Comment down below. So, a bit what, much, then, it? I mean, it's not, though, is it? Gotta represent. So, anyway. What are we gonna do? They say you've got to have the ball positioned about four feet away, and they say use your driver, but I don't think my driver's four foot away. I thought you were gonna say about the height of me, then. Oh, you could lie down. <laughs> you could use Alex, actually, yeah. Sorry, Deck. Um, so, what we'll do, we've set it up on the phone here, it says it's ready to go. So I'm going to get a six iron out because he doesn't trust me not to hit it over the net. And we're going to have but a crack. On, on that note, guys, so if we actually have a look at what numbers you get on here, you get ball speed, you get launch angle, you get club speed, and you get spin rate. So this is the free version. You do get total distance and carry distance on the paid version. But let's just compare the ball speed and the club speed with this against the 20G launch monitor. We are ready to go. Club speed, ball speed, links up with the flight scope. Hit the first shot away. Bit, bit nervous about this actually. I'm a bit nervous for it. I'm just praying you hit the bloody net. <laughs> okay, so let's hit eat after each shot. Let's have a look at the numbers on there. Club speed, ball speed. Look at the numbers on here. Remember, we've got one strike, three strikes, and it's out the net. And I think we've got to focus on the accuracy of this because we know that the flight scope is probably going to be yeah, the, the, I mean, as accurate as you can get. I mean, that's, this is what some of the guys use on tour. So I'm really intrigued to see how this goes. Can't be, can it? Absolutely can't be. So we've got. Six iron, so I don't need to over the net. Pray, pray, pray. <laughs> pray, pray, pray. Here we go. Wait, what, what did that say? 92.2 <laughs> miles of ball speed. Okay, sir. I can confirm that is not correct. So this is set into indoor short mode. Ball speed 116.9 and club speed 87.3. So this has got club speed at 68.3. Spin rate at 178.9 and launch angle at 11.5. Well, I mean, we're just, I just a, we're just a little bit out. It just does. I just don't see how it can be accurate in any way. I don't. Oh, it's obviously miles out. You know what I don't get is why is it that side? I know it tells yeah. you to put it that side. Why is it not behind you? Well, it can't. Be, I guess it takes a photo, but I don't get why you, for a right-handed player it wouldn't tell you to put it this side. 
Well, is it is it basically judging the speed of the ball? Yeah, it always is looking at. It's looking. No, it's not even looking at the ball. And because in the setup it says, make sure there's no moving objects this side of it. It's just basically seeing a moving object move across the screen and measuring that. But it doesn't really work. Let's try no. This. Okay. Try ball number two. No. It's not even picked it up. Don't pick it up. Ball number three. This, this is obviously the issue that we're going to have. Yeah, and I mean, a part of this is what I've got to say is, what can you expect from a, a free launch monitor? But the, the technology is going to be the same whether it's free or paid for. Yeah, exactly. So if you're then going to go and spend six ninety nine a month on it to yeah. get the pro version, are you actually going to no. be getting your money's worth? I personally don't think so. Yeah. Okay, next one. Let's do one thing. Josh is sneaking a bit forward there and sneaking close to the net. Get yourself back. I'm good at Get you. back. I'm only saying that far. He thinks he can hit a five iron or six iron over there. You're dreaming. He's never hit a six iron above knee height. I had a sleepless night about this last night, lad. <laughs> okay, we got a ball number two. 90.9 ball speed, 67.3 club speed. Okay, well, ball speed 119.3 and club speed 90.6. I mean, it's just not. It's no. just, okay, it's a free app, but I don't understand why you would put something out there that isn't accurate. Obviously, it's never going to be as accurate as a fight scope. No, but, but still, it's a long way out, that. A long way out. It's saying that's saying your ball speed is the same as what your club head speed is. It basically says you feather every shot. Well, you do, mate. <laughs> right, anyway, let me have a go. Sorry, I'm hugging it a little bit. Absolutely hugging it. Let me pretend like I know what I'm doing here. Yeah, you can look really studious, mate, in the side of the corner. <laughs> the side of the corner, side of the screen. Ooh, I think that another issue you, you have as well with it is that not only inconsistencies... Big of, word, that for you, mate. Yeah. Not only the inconsistencies of the readings, but how inconsistent it is picking the ball up. I've hit three shots there and it's only picked up two. And I think that's going to be something that is sh showing quite a bit. Here we go. So someone with a bit of a higher ball speed. Let's see what happens. Please. <laughs> these levers. Nice strike, Alex. Duffed it. Absolute shopping to <laughs> Wow, I feel stiff. I blame the clubs, mate. They're not my clubs, these. It's because you're used to shorter ones, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. It is true. Okay, ball number two for me. So nothing picked up. Did that pick it up there? Didn't even pick it up. Retake. There we go. 96.9 miles speed. 96.9, 71.7 club speed. So I've got on here 129.7 ball speed. Yeah. And 92.6 club speed. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, but this has got to be another strike. And yeah. You can't put out an app that's just not accurate. People, people, guys are going to take this to the range and think, what? That is my worry with it, worry with it, because you're using this to help you improve your golf game, right? You're using it to, okay, can I increase my club head speed? Can I work on my launch angle? Can I do my gapping in my bag? Well, no, you, you can't, can't no. because you're going to go on the golf course and go, because ultimately to how that's going to give you a carry in total distance, it's going to interpret club speed and ball speed to give you a projected distance. Now, if club speed and ball speed's wrong, all your distances are going to be wrong. So yeah. you're going to go on the golf yeah. course and think, oh yeah, Kinder might go, oh, might hit me 6 iron 160, dreaming, don't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but then on the flip side of it is, we'll that's further. giving you like Duff reading saying you're hitting your, your six iron 140 because of the ball speed. Yeah. You stand on the course, oh, I've got 140 in, and you fly in the green every time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've, for me... Is it three strikes, though? Well, we're on two at the minute. Okay, so I need to hit one more, because I've only actually, well, I've only really hit one shot. I duff the first. <laughs> okay. No pressure. No pressure. I hit that really nice, too fair. You did. Bit of a slice. What was it slice? 97.2 ball and 72 mile an hour club. 132.3 ball and 94.4. I mean, club. for me, that is just too far out. You're not even talking small, no. like like miles, a couple mile per hour. It's like 20 mile per hour out, and then even more so on the ball speed. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not good enough. Three strikes. It's out. 
Three done. strikes out. One thing I would say is the app does look quite nice when you use it. It's nice it does look good. Out. It does look good, <laughs> but I, I just don't think it's worth your six ninety nine a month if you're going to pay for the pro mode. No, because a few things. My issues with this: number one, accuracy. It's got to be the got to be the highest thing. Yeah. Number two, you've actually got to have a tripod or a towel to use it so and set yeah, it up. Put it on a towel, but I don't see how that's going to. And work. number three, it doesn't sometimes even pick it up. Ball up. Yeah. And okay, we understand that a flight scope is. A very expensive piece of kit, but that's probably the most accurate thing you can judge this. Against. But but there are other versions of the flight scope that are a little bit cheaper, and in future weeks we're going to be looking at these, and they could be a more affordable option. Excellent. So now let's go on to our money-saving tip of the week. So let's get on to section number two, where we're going to talk about grips. Wait, hold on. First things first. Deck, you've done the wrong side. Man. What do you mean? You're the short one, Sam. Ah, is that your good side as well, mate? Yeah, it's a good side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're talking grips. Difference between Lamkin, which I think are an absolute money saver, and Golf Pride. And then we're all, as golfers, can be quite snobbish about our gear. Hundred percent. Yeah. Clubs, even up to the grip. Okay. Everyone has the Golf Pride grips. They see the pros using them. Exactly. Using them. Even me, I've got a Golf Pride. Thinks he's a pro. Only on my driver though. Just now the thing is with this, you've got to realise these are per grip about thirteen to fourteen ninety nine fitted. These are about ten pounds, and they last longer. Yeah, and I think the thing is that everyone needs to realise is yeah, okay, all the pros do use golf pad grips, but guess what? They're getting them changed every week. Yeah, they can or every other week, every single week. Yeah, and where I think with something like the Lamkin grip, you're getting a better product for a little bit less, it's going to last you longer. 100%. Now the only the only downside of Lamkin grips is they do this version or black or just the black and white version. Whereas obviously Gold Pride, they do have a little bit more variance in colours, in styles with the tall wrap. So there are pitfalls of them each of them. Yeah, and I, th I think obviously with some of the Gold Pride you get the the uh, stick down the back. Makes bit. a real difference to your game. Well, apparently, apparently <laughs> I've never used them, this one doesn't have it, but apparently it does help with where your fingers are and the club and things like that. And I think maybe that's the extra that you're paying for, but as the quality of a grip, 100% Lamkin. And I'm only taking this from a very good friend of mine, Andrew Murray and Tom Murray, and these guys swore by them. Now, I've used Lamkin grips since being about this big, and I've never had to re-grip a set of golf clubs. Yes, I've washed them with hot soapy water and scrubbed them, but they come out like brand new. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money, I would definitely recommend trying a Lamkin. And even if you just try it on your driver or your wedges to begin with. Let's get into trade up. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna trade Emma's club I still think it's weird that she got a name engraved in the bottom of it. This boy. You can tell you've already just started playing golf you. But we're going to trade it. Trade this up, <laughs> and we're gonna hopefully go up to a Scotty Cameron in that right lap. Yeah, I mean, this putter, if anybody knows anything about yes putters, Matt Fitzpatrick, known as one of the best putters in the world, uses this putter. And these things were one of the best putters back in the day, and still probably are. So our goal is to trade this all the way up to a Scotty Cameron, and we need your help. And by the way, when we get there, we're gonna give you a chance to win it. But first things first, guys, who wants an Emma putter? <laughs> Might as well start here, haven't we? Yeah. If anyone wants, wants this and you've got anything to trade, get down in the comments and we'll be more than happy to trade up for it. But also, if you've actually got um, a, a website, anything you can recommend to help us do this, I know a few of the lessons that I teach, they use certain things on Facebook. Do let us know. We want to get you involved in this. Let's get this to start Scotty Cameron and then let's see if we can take it further. That is a wrap for this week. Next week, we're going to look at a training aid used by Cameron Smith, who came second at the Masters. Isn't it overpriced, though? It must work for him, though. As well as looking at another top money-saving tip that actually will help you improve your golf. Help us with the trade-up as well. Thank you so much for watching the first episode. Look forward to joining you next week. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh, sorry, yeah. And hit the bell. You're not going to want to miss next week.